Hello guys, welcome back to CEBAX Tutorial Channel and this is our situation number 70 from CEBAR exam, November 2022. But before we start to solve this problem, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and updates on our YouTube channel. Due to architectural requirements, column or a column is a T section. So ito yung mga given natin, we have 6 25mm diameter bars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 dito. Ayan. And then 4 diameter or 25 diameter bars. So, in-note na natin dito agad. So, itong andito sa ating flange is mga 25 millimeter bar. And ito rin sa ating, uh, kumbaga, web member is also 25 millimeter diameter bar. And then, yung ating tie is 10 millimeter diameter and then our concrete or clear concrete cover is 40 millimeter so if you say kung a uh, clear concrete cover nasa outer uh kumbaga nasa outer layer ng mismong bar so if you say ito yung 10 millimeter diameter bar natin ito yung 40 millimeter na concrete cover or clear concrete cover. So, dito kasi hindi na namin pinalitaw yung thickness ng 10 millimeters. Ayan. So, ito, ay, sorry, sorry. This is 40 millimeters. Then, yung ating F'C is 28 megapascal and yung ating yield stress is 415 megapascal for the steel bars. Assume that all, or assume that for all bars, ang ating Fs is equivalent to FY. Ibig sabihin, in na natin na lahat ng mga bars natin ay mag yield or kaya yung kanilang SS is mag exceed sa ating yield stress. Kaya, uh, yung ating magiging FS is equivalent to our FY. So, we don't need to check if nag-yield ba yung mga bakal natin or hindi. So, number one, what is the distance in millimeters of the plastic centroid of the section from the y-axis? So, nasa natin y-axis? Andito. Ayan. So, paano ba kapag sinama natin plastic centroid? Ibig sabihin, plastic centroid, yung mga forces natin sa, kumbaga sa compression and tension fiber or side of a structure is equivalent sa isa't isa. Um, meron tayong tinatawag na plastic moment capacity sa steel design under sa beam. Okay? Pero dito kasi concrete tayo. So, ang gagawin lang natin dito is simple lang. Isusolve natin yung mga forces ng steel bars and yung forces na makukuha natin para sa concrete. Tapos, gagamit tayo ng concept ng Varignon's Theorem para malocate natin yung uh, pinaka-location ng ating plastic centroid. So, ano ba ang Varignon's Theorem? Diba? Ang Varignon's Theorem is equivalent or ang Varignon's Theorem is area total multiplied by x bar is equivalent to the summation of area multiplied by their corresponding x bar or centroids over ay sorry ito na pala yan na, yan na siya yan then i-divide lang natin yung ating summation of area multiplied by their corresponding or corresponding x bar over total area so ito kasi area so sa atin naman ay gagamitin natin true forces so number 1 Yung ating X bar ngayon is equivalent to summation of all forces multiplied by their corresponding X bar or centroids over the overall area which is, or sorry, overall forces which is our resultant. So, hatiin natin itong mga to. Yan. So, ito ay para sa ating uh, compression force 1. Then, ito naman is or concrete force or what I mean is, um, yung force na dadalihin ng ating concrete. Ayan. Then, ito naman yung para sa number 2. Ayan. And then, siyempre, ang, ang centroids ito ay nasa gitna, di ba? Nandiyan. Then, ito naman. Siyempre, nandito sa gitna. 
Then, palitawin natin lahat ng forces. So, tawagin natin ito as tensile force. T1. Ito naman. T2. Ito naman. T3. So, nilagay ko na lang para ano. Uh, Di ba? Or parang ma-relate natin sa beams. Di ba kapag bakal, tension ang ginagamit natin. Or tensile, tensile force. Ito naman. Para sa concrete. So, let's say C1. Ito naman is concrete also. So, this is for C2. So, syempre, by... Di ba, by stress. Stress is equivalent to P over A. So, para makuha natin yung P, kailangan yung ating stress is multiply natin ng area. O yung force P natin is equivalent to stress multiplied by area. So, therefore, ang ating... T1 is equivalent to stress niya na 415 or FY, then multiplied by area. Ano ba ang area natin dito? Pi over 4 multiplied by, ilan yung ating bar? Apat, uh, no? So, 25 squared multiplied by 4. So, gawin natin dito, in, ano na lang to? I store natin sa alpha A. Then, ito naman, FY then multiplied by pi over 4. Multiplied by 25 squared, multiplied by 2. So, ito naman, B. The next, T3, is equivalent to our FY, multiplied by pi over 4, multiplied by 25 to. Apat. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yan. Then, store natin sa C. And then, yung atin namang C1 is equivalent to 0.85 F'C multiplied by the area. Anong area natin dito? 250 times, ilan to? 700. So, ito is store natin sa D. Ito naman, 0.85 F'C multiplied by 300 multiplied by 450. Ito naman, meron pa bang E? <laughs> Di memorize na. Ayan, meron pang E. So, store naman natin ito sa E. So, say, say natin. FY is 415 multiplied by pi over 4 multiplied by 25 squared then multiplied by, let's say X na lang to, Kasi papadan pa lang naman natin yung X eh. Yung B lang ng ano nila. Nung bars. So, pulp. 4. So, store natin sa A. Yan. And then, is 3. Balik natin to. Halt ulit. Then, 2. Yan. So, store natin sa B. Tapos, balik natin natin. Gawin natin 4 ulit para sa C. Yan. So, okay na tayo sa ABC. Then, 0.85 F'C, which is equivalent to ilan? 28. Then, multiplied by 250, multiplied by 700. So, ito, store natin sa D. Then, edit na lang natin to. 300 by 450. And then, to store natin sa E. Ayan. Nung ating x bar is equivalent to T1 multiplied by, ano kaya ang, ah yes, di pa pa natin nalagay yung mga x bar nila, no? Lagyan natin dito isa, isa So, with respect to y axis, so ang ating T1, ang kanyang x1 is equivalent to what? Yung, kung makikita natin dito, ganyan sila. And then, yung ating stirrups. Tapos, ito yung concrete natin. So, this is... 40, then plus 10, tapos kalahati nung 25. Yan. Yan yung ating x1. So, 40 plus 10 plus 25 over 2. So, ang ating x1 ay 62.5 millimeters. Then, x2 is equivalent to, ang x2 natin ay, ilan ba to? 250, hindi ba? So, 250 minus natin yung ano, 40 dito. Then, minus natin yung 10. Tapos, minus natin yung kalahati. Nung 25 millimeters. So, 250 minus 40 minus 10 minus 25 over 2. 
So this is our x2, 187.5. Purayin natin to. Next, our x3. Ang x3 natin is yung buo na 250 plus 450 then minus yung uh, concrete, uh, clear concrete cover 40 then minus 10 then minus kalahati ng 25. So this is 637.5. Then, C1. Ah, sumobra tayo dito. Ayan. C1 natin is kalahati ng 250. That is 125. As, yes, uh, bali nasa X4 na para tayo, no? X4. X4 is equivalent to 125 millimeters. And then, ang ating C2 is 250. Then, kalahati ng 450. So, this is 400. 75. Okay. Then, ang ating X bar is equivalent to T1 multiplied by X1 plus, so yan, so on and so forth. Alam nyo na yan. <laughs> so, lagyan natin sa calculator siguro. So, T1, which is alpha A, then multiplied by 62.5 plus alpha B multiplied by 187.5 then Alpha C multiplied by 637.5 plus alpha D multiplied by 125 plus alpha E multiplied by 475. Then, total forces, that is, o yung resultant natin, that is alpha A plus alpha B plus alpha C plus, oops, alpha C plus alpha D then plus alpha E. So, ang sagot natin ay 286.09. So, ang sagot natin ay 286 dito. Ayan. So, 286.09. 0.9 millimeters from the y-axis. Okay? So, okay na tayo sa number 1. Next. Which of the following gives the location... Of the geometric centroid from the y-axis. So, ito, madali lang. Ano lang siya? Talagang literal na Varignon's theorem lang siya. Kasi area lang ang pag-uusapan natin ito eh. Kasi geometric centroid lang. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi natin i-consider yung mga bakal. Ang i-consider lang natin is yung mismong geometry ng ating volume. So, number two, ito lang gagamit natin dyan. Area. Ayan. Na kung saan ang ating area 1 is equivalent to ito, 250 multiplied by 700. And then, ang ating area 2 naman is 450 multiplied by 300. So, ito siguro, store na lang natin sa X and Y. So, 250 times 700, store natin sa X and then, 450 times 300 is turn natin sa Y. So, this is X. And this is Y. Tapos, ang ating X1 dito at X2 is kalahati ng 250, no? 125. Tapos, 475. So, agad natin makukuha yung X bar. So, actually, itong number 2, napaka, ano na to, napakadali. Kung tutusin, we can consider this as bonus, di ba? Bonus na lang siya. Bonus question. So, X multiplied by 25, 125 plus Y multiplied by 475 over X plus Y. Oops. So, ang sagot is 277.42. So, 277.42 millimeters. Then, number 3, a load PU, 400, or 4,155 kilonewton, acts along the x-axis. So, ito yung ating x-axis. So, dyan siya mag-act, pag ganyan. Okay? Any distance at x-axis. Tapos, uh, na kung saan, it is located 420 from the y-axis. So, it, uh, this is 200, uh, 250, no? Silagpas dyan. 
na sabihin natin ito yung PU natin. This is our PU. Na ang location from y-axis daw ay 420 millimeters. Ah yes, di pa natin nilocate kung nasaan yung ano, no? Yung ating plastic centroid. Let's say this is X bar P for plastic. Ito naman, X bar G for geometric. So ito yung X bar P, 286. So lagpas lang dito. Ito yung ating plastic centroid. X bar P. So 420 raw yung ating uh, location from PU, for the PU. What is the resulting bending moment? So, ang gagamitin natin dito is yung kanyang eccentricity. From what? From the plastic centroid. Bakit plastic centroid ang gagamitin natin? Hindi yung sa geometric centroid. Kasi, uh, di ba sinabi natin, yung PU kasi na to, yun yung i-resist ng mga forces, di ba? At yung ating plastic centroid is nilocate natin based on our forces. Ayan. Kaya, yung eccentricity niya is dapat naka-base sa ating plastic centroid. So, this is our eccentricity E. So, therefore, ang ating bending moment dyan is equivalent to M, uh, which is M is equivalent to uh, P multiplied by E. So, what is our E? Ang E natin is 420, then minus yung ating plastic centroid from the y-axis. So, 420 minus 286.09. So, this is 1... 33.91 millimeters. So, therefore, yung ating bending moment is 4155 multiplied by 133.91. So, this is kilonewton per uh, kilonewton millimeter divide natin ng 1000 para maging kilonewton meters. So, 556.40. millimeters. Ah, sorry. This is kilo newton meter. Yan. So, wag kayo magpapalit ito, ha? Kasi possible na maisip rin ng examiner natin na ang gagamitin nyo is yung X, uh, yung ating geometric uh, centroid. So, magkakamali tayo ron. Kasi nga, sabi natin, ang ating PU is dadali ng mga forces. And, uh, nung sunod natin yung X bar G, wala naman tayong ginamit na forces dyan. Yung, kanla, yung kanyang geometry lamang ang ginamit natin dyan. So, hindi lang gagamitin yun. So, kailangan natin gamitin is itong uh, plastic centroid na based on our forces na magre-resist do sa ating applied load na PU. Okay? So, ganun lang naman siya kasimple. Pero, hmm, sa pagkakaalam ko, uh, madalas yung lumalabas tong ganitong type of topic. Nung kami no, nung November 2016, lumabas rin to eh. Nung November 2016. Tapos, Mga sumunod na exam, meron na ito sa 2019 or 2016, ayan. So, ito, at least, uh, ginagawa pa rin namin siya ng uh, mga video tutorial para at least uh, nakakatulong pa rin sa inyong pag-review. And mali natin, lumabas rin ulit siya ngayon, November 2023. So, I hope marami kayo natutunan dito sa aming situation number 70 for C board exam November 2022. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and updates on our YouTube channel. So, thank you for watching guys. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.